and from Oklahoma comes. Thank you. All right, we're going to go ahead and open with a word of prayer, and then we will uh, get things started here. Let's bow our heads this afternoon, if we so kind. Dear Lord and Father, we thank you again for once again providing us an opportunity to come together, uh, discuss things we think are of import to you. We uh, thank you for uh, allowing us the opportunity. We ask for your wisdom and your guidance as uh, we uh, uh, discuss things together uh, as Adventist Community Services. Thank you again for providing this opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, I thank you all for joining us this afternoon. Uh, this is another educational advisory that we are offering, and uh, we are hopeful that uh, the information received will be of uh, 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 help to you. As uh, uh, we talk about today, uh, one of our granting opportunities, uh, uh, Colette Newer is, uh, well, I'll tell you what, uh, Winnell is going to introduce uh, Ms. Colette Newer, our new Associate Director. So, Winnell, I'm going to turn things over to you. Take it okay. You. For those who don't know me, I'm Winnell Stevens. I'm the Assistant Director here at Adventist Community Services at the North American Division. And I'm um, happy to be part of this team. And Derek Lee was our director. And um, I wanted to introduce Colette Newer. She's our new Associate Director for Adventist Community Services. And she actually uh, served on the grant committee uh, before she accepted this position. So she has a wealth of information and now she's going to uh, guide us along how to fill out a grant application, the seed grant application. So this is what the webinar is for the churches. So um, we're happy that Colette is part of this team and we look forward to hearing from her. Thank you, Winnell. And I believe my technical, I'm heard and everything right now, am I right? That's correct. Okay. I've, got, I've got a lot of things open and on different screens. I just wanna make sure before we get started, I'm gonna share my screen. This, this webinar will be recorded. So if you want to refer back to it or if there's other people that you think would be interested in this, this will be posted on the ACSC grant web page. So this will always be accessible to you. So. If everything looks good on your end, I'm gonna go ahead and get started with, with the ACSC grant. So I do wanna welcome you, each of you, to the ACSC grant overview webinar. This webinar is intended to help you understand the ACSC grant and how to write a winning proposal. So during our time together, we will be reviewing qualifications and criteria for the grant. We will walk through the application questions and then share common reasons applications are not successful and share some tips about how to make yours more successful. And then we'll look at the website and where you can find the application and some other resources that we have housed there related to the seed grant. The seed grant was developed to spur innovation and growth in ACS centers. And this is exemplified by the development of ACS ministries, like new, new ACS ministries that are offering services in their communities. There, there is always room for more and new ministries in the ACS family. So this grant can provide startup funds to grow ministries in a new place. It is also the expansion of the types of ministries that are offered. Our communities have very diverse needs, so we need to reflect that reality with the diverse services offered. And then there's also the improvement of the quality and scope of existing ACS ministries to serve the community. Some of our ACS facilities are a little tired looking. Our equipment is getting old or a, a new refrigerator or new flooring can make a big difference in the safety the efficiency and the, just the welcoming atmosphere of our ministry spaces. So as we go through this, you'll see that we have kept the application relatively simple compared to many grants that you will find out there. And this, this is also intentional. This is another purpose of the ACSC grant is to be a stepping stone 
to other ministry grants that you may encounter. So if you're a first time grant writer, we welcome you. This is a great place to begin. And while we kept it simple, the information that we, um, sorry, the information that we're requesting on this application is the same as you'll find requested by many other funders. So I suggest that you put the care into the seed grant proposal, and then you'll be able to leverage that work for other proposals as well. Who is eligible to apply? Seed grant funding is open to ministries in the United States, Bermuda, and Micronesia. So to apply, you must be associated with an Adventist church. Whoa, sorry. With an Adventist-based church-based ministry. You may be associated with more than one church, but you must be operating under the Adventist Church's 501c3 nonprofit status. And then third is the ministries are eligible to receive seed grant funding once every three years. So for example, if you are awarded a grant in 2020, you would be eligible to apply again in 2024. So you get it in in 2020, at any point in 2020, you have 2021, 2022, 2023, and then the next year. So that's three years, and the next year you are eligible to apply again. What are the eligible expenses for the seed grant? The seed grant assists with capital purchases only. For example, tables, shelving, refrigerators, computers, these are items which will be used repeatedly to serve multiple clients. And we'll see more examples of what it can be uh, used for, but it's capital purchases only. Seed grant funds can also be used to purchase supplies um, associated with renovating spaces, primarily used for ACS ministries and the, the, like flooring or light fixtures, but the space needs to be primarily ACS related. So it, this does not, however, include permits or labor costs. And the, the seed grant cannot be used for operating expenses such as utilities, purchase of a building, salaries, or rent. And only eligible costs will be factored into any awards. Other expenses may be included in your budget to demonstrate the scope of the project, but only those capital expenses will be considered when calculating the actual award. The ACSC grant is a three-way partnership, and the first partner is the NADACS, North American Division ACS, who will be award funding of 75% of the eligible project expenses with a maximum of $10,000 per request. So for example, this, this math can be a little tricky, so I'm gonna give some examples to make sure that this is clear, clear and understood. If your budget contains $6,500 of eligible expenses, the maximum award you could receive is 75% of that amount, which is $4,875. If your budget contains $10,000 of eligible expenses, the maximum award you could receive is $7,500, which is 75%. If it is $13,400, 75% is $10,050. But the maximum award is 10,000. So if this project were approved, it would receive a $10,000 award. And at this point, you have reached the maximum award. So even if you have a larger budget, funding would still be limited to 10,000. So say it is an $18,000 budget, 75% is 13,500, but the project would be awarded 10,000. And again, a project budget of $30,000 of eligible expenses would still be awarded $10,000, even though 75% is 22,500. So your budgets may be bigger. We can be just a part of your project. That is not a problem. Don't let this limit your budget or what you're thinking of. There is not a problem with including those other expenses. And often it's an advantage to include them so that the committee that reviews these proposals understands your project. If it looks like a, just a piece of a project, it's gonna look a little silly. So go ahead and include that larger scope, but no, that this is how the work 
the math is going to work when actually allocating the funds and planning your budget. The other parties involved in the project funding are the local conference and the church where the ACS ministry is located. So together, they need to provide funding for at least 25% of the eligible budget. There is not a minimum or maximum amount required for each of those entities, the church and the conference, but they should both be represented in some way. In addition, the letters of recommendation are required from both the conference ACS director and a conference officer. And this is the president, treasurer, or vice president. Want two of those people need to be writing a letter of recommendation for your project. And here's a few things that will help you navigate the application process. There are three ACS seed grant deadlines per year. And these are listed on the seed grant web page housed on the ACS website. And we will be taking a look at that a little bit later in this webinar. You are to work with your conference ACS director throughout the process. And this is really important for you to do. This includes sharing your project early on and just discuss, discuss it with them and see if they feel like it's a good candidate for the seed grant. Let them be a par part of the process of developing your project. Also discuss the budget and if the conference is able to make a financial contribution, you're going to want to make sure this is even possible before you get too deep into this process. So talk to them. And you also want to request that letter of recommendation from the director and ask that they secure a letter from one of the conference administrators as well. Uh, people have very busy schedules, they're traveling, so sometimes those letters can take some time to get and they must be submitted with your application. So don't procrastinate in requesting those. And then you will want to uh, complete and submit the online ACS grant application. That is gonna be part of your process is to do the application itself. The link to the online application goes live. You can access that four weeks prior to the deadline. So it's only open for a month at a time. If you begin the application and then you realize you can't finish it in one sitting because it is an online application, you are able to save a draft and a link will be emailed to you with access to your draft application. However, However, once you click submit, you will no longer have access to that document. So be sure to save a copy for yourself before submitting. Make sure it's complete and make sure you have a record of what you turned in as well. And if you want to get started early, it's only open for four weeks, but if you want to get started early and we recommend that you do, I have some good news for you. You can get a head start on the application by using the working document template. And this Word document is on the ACS grant webpage, which we will look at, and it has the application questions on it. So you can download that at any time that is always available to you and use it to create a draft of your proposal. And then when the link is live, you can copy that text right into the application when it becomes available. After the deadline, all proposals pass through three rounds of review. There is an administrative review, which is simply to ensure that it meets all the basic eligibility requirements. That's just in the office here. Just make sure everything is clear and together. And then the proposals are passed to the ACS Seed Grant Review Committee. This committee is comprised of conference ACS directors representing the different unions. So there is a broad base of directors and they review and they recommend the proposals. If they want, if they recommend them to be approved, they recommend it to the NAD ACS board and that's where the final approval takes place. If your proposal is approved, a grant agreement will be sent to you and your conference ACS director to sign. This agreement confirms that you will use any funding as stated in the approved budget and as well as confirms that you will send, submit a report after six months. Once the signed copy of that agreement is returned to the office here, the check will be sent to the conference office 
who will then forward it to the local church. And that church treasurer, your church treasurer, will keep all the financial records for the project, and they will ensure that the money is being spent on the approved expenses. So when, when they are audited, this will become part of the audit of the church. All grant recipients are required to submit a grant report within six months of receiving the funds. So you have six months from the time you receive the check to complete your project. So if you don't think that your project will be able to spend those funds in that time frame, you, you should consider waiting to apply in a future deadline. There's three deadlines per year. There's another one coming. Um, and that, that can give you some more time to lay the groundwork and get all your pieces ready to do the project to be able to complete it in that time frame. And of course, if, if you thought you could, the unexpected does happen and unforeseen circumstances do delay the projects. We, we are very aware of that. We are understanding of that. If that happens, then you need to call to explain and request an extension. Communication really is a key in this whole process. Communication with your, your conference director, communication with the division, just all around good communication is going to make this a much easier process for you. And this next section of our time, I'm going to review and explain the application itself, beginning with the cover page. This first section is seeking information about the ministry itself, those first four bullets. What is the name and address for your ministry? And this, this may seem more obvious to some of you than others, but remember ACS operations across the division look very different. So some operations may not have the church's name, may not have that in their name, or they may operate from a different location. So we want to know where specifically is this ministry located. The ministry email and phone should be the ACS director or another person who is primarily responsible for that ministry. We may need to contact the person for additional information. So we need to know where they can be reached. And as we've talked about, all eligible ministries must be associated with a church. So the next four bullets ask what the church is and who, who are the, who's the pastor, how can we get in contact with them? Um, and this is the church that is associated with the ACS centers. And if there are multiple sponsoring churches, some ACS centers are, are, have the, the luxury of multiple churches that are supporting and sponsoring them. And if that is true, use the primary one. There's usually one that stands out a little bit more than the others as the, the, the primary church. And we need that pastor's name, email, and phone number. The other point of contact in this cover page section is the person who is actually writing and submitting the application, who is responsible for this particular grant proposal. And again, this could be the ACS director, it could be the pastor, sometimes it's somebody else. It could be a supporter of the ministry that just wants to volunteer and help out, and this is their role. So this is the person, if there are questions, we will typically begin with this person as they should have a high degree of familiarity with the project needs and the application. So if we need clarification, this is who we're going to go to first. So make sure that this is, this is that person. The project funding or the budget. This section should include all of what it takes financially to complete the project, beginning with income. And here is where that three-way partnership should be reflected again. How much will the sponsoring church contribute? This may be from church funds, funds specific to the ACS Center, or even funds secured through another grant or a donation from somebody outside the church. The point is that the church is involved in securing part of the finances for the project. We are, not, we are not as concerned with who gave it, but that the church is over those funds and, and has them. The local conference, again, the conference could allocate funding through their normal budgeting process, or they may secure a donation from the project from a donor that they know is interested. As long as the conference has some 
buy-in in this process we're going to be okay. And other sources are not required. You see a line there for other sources, but it is available if you need it. That's another, everybody's situation is different. If you need that, that might be a place for an outside grant. If there's a food bank giving, a, giving part of this or an in-kind donation, that type of stuff can, can be reflected in the value right there. The ACSC grant, that line is how much are you requesting from this grant? Again, think about the 75% up to 10,000. So that line should never go over $10,000. And then we would like to know how much do you have on hand? How much of it has been raised and is in the bank? This does not include funds like the ACSC grant. They are not in your bank account. Also, if you have not received the conference allocation or outstanding pledges, they should not be listed. And the reason for this question right here is to give the committee a sense of whether or not the project is financially feasible. For example, let's say a church purchased a storefront to renovate to use as an ACS center, a beautiful project. And the total renovations will cost $110,000 and they have on hand $200. Then the question is gonna come up if the church has the ability to raise the additional funds to complete the project. It's such a wide gap. Where are they at in this process? We need to understand that. And the sorts of items that the, the C grant covers can typically be purchased later in a project to finish or to furnish. So if this sounds like your situation, it may be best to wait until later to apply when the C grant funds are in better balance with the overall budget. And the expenses, now we're to the expenses in your budget and please itemize the expenses. Your project may be simple, such as purchasing updated refrigerators or freezers. And in this case, the budget will be pretty straightforward. In other cases, you may be seeking funding for part of a very large project, such as the entire kitchen remodel that will exceed seed grant maximums and include ineligible expenses. And in this scenario, go ahead and include those expenses. It will help us to understand the scope of the project as well as how much the total will cost. Um, just know that they won't be considered when calculating the award. And you can see in the example that's on the screen, that you can see that this budget listed in red are some ineligible costs, but they do help paint the picture that the ministry team understands what is needed to complete the project. Sometimes you cannot install a commercial freezer without a licensed electrician. So if you don't put that in there, we may question if you understand what it really takes to complete this and end up with unexpected expenses. So go ahead and put it in there. Just know that they won't be calculated into the award. And after the cover page information, we get into the body of the application. And the first question is, in a short paragraph, summarize the project items you're seeking funding for and if this is part of an established ministry, how will it enhance your overall program? This is the purchase. What are you purchasing? That's all we want to know. Um, and I'm gonna show some examples here. It's, this one is a pretty straightforward, you're not getting into history, anything. What are you trying to do? So here's an example of that. We want to install a wheelchair ramp at the entrance to the house used for ACS Ministries, as well as three handicapped parking spaces that are ADA compliant to accommodate comp uh, our clients with mobility issues. Also to purchase a new shed for storage, food storage to increase the amount of food donations we can accept and the number of clients served. Very, very simple, straightforward. That is the, the, the first question. What do you want to do? The second question is the ministry overview. This question allows you to share the big picture of what you're doing as a ministry, not just the specific project you're requesting funds for. 
So briefly describe your overall organization, including what services you offer and who benefits from this. What is the specific need in your community that you meet and what is unique about your services? How long have you been in operations? What are the needs you serve? What is unique? Introduce us to your overall ministry. And here's an example. We have a mobile kitchen that has served the homeless for three years, offering a hot meal and friendship. Volunteers not only cook and serve the meals, but also interact with the people offering encouragement and building relationships. We keep resource referrals on the trailer to offer those interested as well as offer a recovery class from the church. And then the third question is in tangible, measurable terms, list the results of your current programming. How many people are served? How many classes offered? In addition, what goals do you hope to achieve through the purchase of the items funding is requested for? So the, the last question was the big overview. Here you're getting into some quantitative measurements, how many classes, the number of clients and students. And then if you receive this and are able to complete your project, how will it change what you're able to do? Here is a, an example of that. So our food pantry is open once per week and serves close to 200 families per month. With the addition of a new storage shed and upgraded refrigerator and freezers, we can increase the number of people we serve to 250 per month. In addition, we can offer more fruits, fresh fruits and vegetables. So you get some quantitative, some qualitative, more nutrition, more people. Make sure that you have thought through what this project will do for you. The next question gets into the outcomes of the project. Uh, what changes, what changes in people's lives do you expect because of your services? What will change in the homes of the families you serve? And these may be immediate, these may not be immediately manifest, but they can be reasonably expected or you have seen it in the past. So you can't always project the future of how this is gonna, how this is gonna go out in reality once you start serving in a certain way but you can, you can make some reasonable assumptions based on what you've seen in the past or what you've seen in other ministries that do similar work. Are there differences? We want to know what, are, what is different because you exist. And if there are differences, how are lives different? How are they different? The changes may not happen right away. It could take months. It could even take years for these changes to happen. But what will be different? And here's an example of this one. Our English language classes lead to an increase in people's ability to communicate with employers, doctors, and their children's teachers. They have increased job opportunities. Citizenship classes mean families won't face deportation and separation from loved ones. They will also be able to purchase a home and increase their household financial stability. So this moves a little beyond what you do to say, what can people do with the services you offer? Because they have better nutrition, what will happen in their lives? Will children be able to concentrate in school and their grades, we expect their, their academic outcomes to go up? What will happen in these households because you do what you do? You know, are our lives different? They should be, they should be, and they are. So tell us, tell us how they're different. And then the impact is the fifth question, and that is of the long range impact of the ministry. What long term changes do you expect to see in your community because of the services you offer? What will be different for the community at large because your ACS center existed? This broadens the, the scope of what you consider now beyond the households served, as well as beyond the time frame of your service. What will the outcomes you mentioned in question four 
mean for the people served and the community around them in the long term. And this will most likely be measured in years. So let's take a look at an example of that. And this is for a ministry that has a garden and entrepreneurship classes associated with the garden. So there's multiple things going on, but that entrepreneurship is in the context and food production is in that gardening context. So greater access to fresh food in the community leading to better nutrition and increased community health, increased independence of the community to produce their own food and economic opportunities, increased job growth and financial stability. If that makes sense, this broadens the scope of what you consider your ministry to do. Beyond everything else, this is long-term, the whole community is gonna be affected because the families you serve have a different life. And then number six, we're getting into some, some much more, more technical, straightforward questions, the leadership qualifications. What leadership and technical skills does your organization possess that makes your program qualified to address the needs represented in your mission? People, my friends, you and other people are the greatest resource for ministry that we have. And we would like to know about who is involved in yours. So this can include education degrees, certifications. It could also include experience, professional experience, life experience, or ministry and community experience. We all bring something. This is not just something you can put a piece of paper on and say they have this. Sometimes it's a little less tangible. It can be specific skills or some, some soft skills that people bring to our ministry. And the, then an example of this is the ACS director has been serving for seven years and has attended the ACS nonprofit leadership certification program. So we see some education, some sustainability in that ACS director. The pastor has successfully supported an ACS mobile pantry for their former church and learned lessons there that are helping us expand our food pantry to include a mobile unit. So we have some experience of ministry on that. Our volunteers bring a variety of personal and professional skills and experience, including a mechanic, two retired school bus drivers with CDL credentials, and a former school principal. So sometimes they may not be directly related to, in, in this example, we have people, a mechanic is going to be very handy for, for a mobile pantry, but it could be something like a school principal who just knows how to administrate a program or knows how to work in the community. There's different levels and we value them all. So let us know who is here that can make this ministry work for you and your community. Question seven are partnerships. What community partners do you work with? List key partners along with one or two sentences to describe the relationship. So th these are not long explanations or histories of other organizations. We're just trying to see who are you connected with and how do you, on, on what piece are you connecting with? So here's just a few unrelated uh, examples, but they give some ideas. The food bank, we receive free food free or at discounted rates. They've also given us a grant for operating costs. <clears throat> Another one might have the Mexican consulate. Books, they provide books for Spanish literacy classes and certification for graduates, earning the equivalent of a GED from Mexico. The county conservation district, consultation for best gardening practices, plant starts and a lawns to lettuce grant. So just simple to the point, just a sentence or two to say, this is the organization, this is what, how we partner with them. And it could be going both ways. You can say what you provide as well as, you know, you may be receiving referrals while somebody else is taking some of your referrals. It can be anything like that. Just let us know kind of how are you connected in your community because that is where our sustainability comes from. So we wanna be able to see that that you are working together in partnership with other people. Uh, this is another straightforward question. Just what facilities and resources do you have? What spaces do you operate out of? 
Is it a shared space or a dedicated space for ACS use only? What resources do you have access to that makes this ministry possible? So help, help the committee visualize and understand the physical space of your ministry. If you want an outdoor storage unit, do you have the space on the property for it? Do you have the authority on that property to do that? If you're requesting a mobile unit, where will it be stored? Um, do you have a space in the church? Is it a separate building on the church property or is it a building on a separate property? Just let us know where you're at. And, and this is important. Um, it, it's especially important if this is shared with other ministries. We really do like to know if this is dedicated to ACS or how it's shared and how you interact with other ministries taking place at your church. So here's an example of an answer for this one. ACS operates out of the old conference office in Reno, Nevada, uh, which is split into two separate buildings. The main building holds offices, thrift or store and community projects, the warehouse that operates our food pantry and donations drop off. Several members live within three miles of the church, this is a different one, and have property to park the trailer when not in use. We also have several willing members who own trucks and will rotate the responsibility of driving the trailer. So you can see we're knowing if somebody's requesting a, 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 a kitchen trailer, can they even pull it? So we need to know those facilities and the resources, those key large resources that are gonna make this go forward. And then question eight is implementation and evaluation. Have you thought through the steps you will take to get this project done? So describe the who, what, when, and how of accomplishing this project. Also, how will you evaluate the effectiveness of the change? Consider both qualitative and quantitative evidence. And here's, here's a, uh, a short example of schedule. We will schedule a work bee to paint the walls, tear out the old floor, and prepare the surface for new flooring. An order will then be placed for the new flooring and shelving to arrive in time for a second work bee where it will be laid, shelving assembled and installed. Work will be completed within three months of receiving the check. Uh, we record the amount of food received and distributed so we're able to evaluate how much more food we have and how many more clients served. A very straightforward, this is not, we're not trying to trick you on this question. We just really do wanna know what are the steps, simple steps that you are gonna to take to make this happen? And how will you know if it made a difference? We should know when we're making a difference. So, and that will help you with your report as well in the six months. And then supporting documents. So those are all the questions. Those are all the questions that we're asking of you. It's a fairly straightforward, simple, but there are the, the supporting documents. One is a, a picture is worth a thousand words and you have the opportunity in the application to attach some photos. Help us understand what you want by showing it to us. Photos of the object you seek to purchase, maybe floor plans and a diagram of proposed renovations, Bids for the work help the committee understand how the work will be done. However, make sure that the labor costs are itemized separate from the material costs. If you give us a bid, we want to see the difference. If they're combined together, we will assume that the costs represented in the bid are all labor and ineligible for funding. So you have to, you have to break those out for us to understand. And it doesn't need to be a lot, but a few can help you paint that picture of what you hope to do. And then again, those letters of support need to be, need to be attached in there from the, from the conference, both from the ACS director and from the, the uh, conference treasurer, president, or executive secretary. And these are required to attach in the application. So you will not be able to submit. You will not be able to click on submit of that final application unless those are attached. And next, I just wanna share with you some photos of things that have been submitted to give you an idea of what photos might look like or what some of these graphics might look like. The photos you share down this one show the current conditions and are very, very clear why this grant is needed. They illustrate very well the floor, 
that's damaged on the left by uninsured, make sure we know it's uninsured, water damage, leaving the floor uneven and unsafe. And then there's the sheds that, that are leaking and the doors keep falling off. These make the need very plain for the committee. Here's another one that shared the different components of a mobile kitchen. So we have the, the sink, the, the stoves, refrigeration, and a generator for them that gives us an idea because these can all take very different forms. So this helps us say, oh, now I see what you're talking about. Here's one that took a screenshot of the exact item they wish to purchase, including the price. So this really shows that they have done their research and will be able to quickly make the purchase if funding is received. They've already researched, they know how much, it's ready to go. And here's a ministry wanting to install the wheelchair ramp. I think we used that as an example at one point, and a shed. So they included a photo of the current front of the center along with a blueprint of the ramp and a screenshot of the shed that they want to purchase. And oh, the sheds can the sheds can really expand what you're able to do. Here's a shed with a with a refrigerator and then some some carts to be able to move things around and save all of our backs a little bit of our volunteers. So some of the reasons that proposals are not successful, I want you to understand so you can avoid these pitfalls. One is an incomplete proposal. Read the questions carefully and be sure to provide the information that's being requested. The questions are there to help the review committee understand your project and its impact on your community so that they are comfortable investing in this ministry. We do consider this grant to be an investment in what you are doing. So you are safe to assume that those who read your proposal are not familiar with your ministry because it is probably true. So be very clear and be very succinct so that they can understand. Sometimes we operate from such a level of knowledge that it's hard to take that step back and say, if somebody didn't know, what do they need to know to understand this? And that's what, that's what you're gonna have to do with this. Ineligible expenses is the next one. The seed grant does not cover as we've talked about things like salary or one-time events, this needs to be a recurring ministry that will be sustained over time. Expenses related to non-ACS ministry. We, we do partner with other ministries, so there can be some gray areas. So be mindful that we are stewarding donations through this grant that were given to support ACS ministries. So we need to be have that demonstrated in your project. Oh, let me keep going. All right, and then the proportions for the different contributions. If, if just incorrect math, very simple incorrect math, it probably won't make you ineligible, but if it throws off the funding amounts, it can, it can put into question some of those proportions that we look at. So we typically reach out for clarification with those, but those need to be submitted in writing. So it can delay the process and it may delay it enough that you'll need to resubmit your proposal for the next deadline. So that can, that can make it a little bit tricky. So um, that can slow, slow your process down. And then just plain old missed deadlines. Most commonly, um, the most common reason for this is not securing those letters of support ahead of the deadline. So please do not uh, procrastinate. But the good news is that if you do miss this deadline, you can submit your application on the next deadline. There are three per year. So there, there will be another one coming down the road that you can regroup and re re gather all of your information and submit it again. So some tips for early success, which you have probably already picked up on, is give yourself time. Start early. You're going to need the time to gather the information, write the draft, and request those, those reviews. I, it, it would be wise to request that a couple people that know the ministry also review the draft and offer suggestion 
especially your ACS director should see your draft, but there may be others who you just think have a good ear or a good eye for writing and can help you. Um, you do not need to wait until the online portal is open. So you can always download that Word document that we're gonna look at and use that to build yourself uh, the, the draft. And give, give yourself time to work through questions you have while writing the proposal. You may not have considered some of those impacts and the, the long term. So give yourself a little bit of time to, to sit and consider what is happening and how you can express that to us. And then uh, whoop, work with your conference ACS director. Make sure that they know you are interested in applying. Ask them for help identifying appropriate expenses for the project and give them sufficient time to write their letter of recommendation and secure one. We've talked about this, but it bears, uh, it, is, it is good to say it again. I don't know that we can say it enough. This is gonna be some of your, your key tips right here. And then ask questions. There are online resources to help clarify what is being asked in the proposal. But if you are at all unsure, ask your ACS director or both of you call the office here. We are always available and happy to meet with you and answer your questions. And then there is the website. And I think I'm going to have to reshare this. I'm going to take you straight to the website to look at. If you go here and then you see the resources to grant programs to the seed grant, and I'm going to pull that up. I don't think you can see that right now. Let's see if I can reshare my screen to show you the website. There it is. So I think you can see where we are on the communityservices.org and go right here to resources and grants program. And click on that and it takes you to this page that has all of the ACS grants available to you. So you see the C grant is the first one listed right there. And it gives you a quick, a quick look at what it covers and who can apply, but it says read more. We're going to click on that and it takes you directly to the page for the seed grant alone. And this has much of the information eligibility partnership that we've already talked about. Here's a couple. Here's a brochure right here in English and in Spanish. It is available that also holds this description eligible expenses. All a lot of what we've covered is in that brochure just to give you an idea. You can print it out, post it up on your bulletin board and see what it is that you are trying to, to do or share it with your team to, to brainstorm ideas. And then right here is the sample of proposal verbiage. So this, some of those samples that, I, that we've gone through in this webinar, those are under here. If you click on here, it takes you to the page where you will uh, see the different questions and some samples and then photos of funded projects. There's some more sample photos in there. But down here is what you're going to be very interested in is the application due dates. Here are the 2022 dates listed here, March 7, which is coming up in just a few weeks, August 15 and October 24. And you can see here five o'clock Eastern time. That is when this portal will turn off and you do not have access to your application anymore. And then down here, you can see start working on a draft proposal here. So that is the draft template. So this is simply a working document. So you know what questions you are going to be asked. And there is also one in Spanish, you can see. And then the application itself. And this, because we are more than less than four weeks out from the deadline, you can see that we are that we can access this. It's all here in a fillable format. And you go, you can scroll through it, write your answers in. So you can see how easy, if you had it in a Word document, you can copy it, paste it right into the box here. You're uploading your bids, blueprints, contracts. You're uploading your letters of support. And you can click off that you have them. See here, you can save it as a draft and get your email or you can continue through it. 
So that is, in a nutshell, the ACS seed grant. I do, uh, I do want to thank you for being here with us. It has been a pleasure to have you. Um, and, and I look forward to reading your applications and hearing more about how you plan to serve your community. I have a question, Colette. Yes, sir. Yes. Let me see. Uh, <clears throat> this is, <clears throat> I'm sorry. <clears throat> this is David Madrid from Hawaii. Yes, sir. Uh, if, my... for example, be, if I applied for the first quarter or for the first date and it was late, uh, can I use that for the second uh, application, the second round of application? I think I, that's I the can most, save it. You don't have problem. to redo it. Is that what yes, you're wondering? Yes, yes, yes. And a very good question. And Winnell, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull in a couple key people here. Winnell has been working with the IT, who is our who is, helps us with administrating that technical side. So she is here with us today as well and has a lot of expertise in it. And I also want to introduce. Luis, Pastor Luis Diazoto, he has taken on chairmanship of the review committee. So thank you, Luis. And um, I'm gonna turn turn over in a minute to you, but, but all three of us are here to answer that question. And I think your particular question might be better suited to Winnell. Have we, have we determined that piece yet? So if you submit your application, you will get an email, but you'll get an email with your application as a PDF document. So if, it, if you need to resubmit it at another deadline because some things need to be adjusted, I would suggest you keep that working uh, Word document on hand. And then you'll have the PDF and the working document so you can still copy and paste, but you will have to resubmit it again Okay. Um, yes, the draft doesn't save from um, deadline to deadline. All right, thank you so much. Appreciate You're welcome. it. This is Cedric Belcher from the DFW area. Uh, my question is, do you have a set number of applicants to approve uh, every time summations are made? We have not set... Um, uh, actually, Luis, do you want to take that one? Uh, sure. Uh, well, basically, we have a budget for the year, right? And the, the, the application is first come, first serve. As soon as they, they are approved, uh, we process them. And in that case, um, we open the opportunity for everyone who wants to, to apply in, in their convenience. Thank you. Oh, and Revy is with us as well, and I know she's always in the chat, so I'm going to let her facilitate who, who or what questions we would like to. Uh, we, I, see, I see a hand raise. I see Robert Smith. Are you applauding, Revy? I'm applauding everybody. Appreciate the meeting. But I have my same age-old question. That is, who's on the Grant C Committee? Is there a list of names where we can find them? Who's on the board? How long are the terms they serve? What's the background Ooh. they bring to the table? Also, how many uh, grants that are out there? Can we get a list of who's got approved and accepted and from what union they are? And does the team ever go out and review the projects? Or are they just look at the camera lists or the video taken? Or uh, is there any but on the NAD team, or is there designated certain territories that will come and seek? Because I know a picture's worth a thousand words, but is there any on hand instead of high tech, some high tech? That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm going to let Luis, uh, since he just did some work on the committee, I'm going to let you start with that and then I'll follow up on, sure. on more stuff. Thank you, Colette. Well, uh, I think this is a good opportunity to introduce our our committee. Um, I would like to ask Rinelle if she can share um, um, the screen in this way we can go over the names. Absolutely. Well, we try to be very uh, broad. Uh, we try to use as many people as possible from the uh, throughout the division. Um, we have here, um, as you can see, um, 
we know Steven, she's our chair secretary. Uh, she really does the, the hard work behind the scenes, collecting all the information, comparing, calling, and, and also uh, myself, I'm the new chair. Uh, and by the way, we just want to thank Colette for the wonderful work she did it as a chair. And thank you for all the, the hard work you did as well, Colette. We appreciate it. Uh, now is my turn um, to take over the chair. But uh, anyway, um, uh, we hope we can do the same steps that Colette did it. Um, we have here Colette that she's going to be on the board as well, on the committee. And also we have uh, Dora Baker from Bermuda Conference. We have Lily Buckingham from South Conference, South Central Conference. We have Todd Casey from Pennsylvania Conference. Uh, Delbert Castillo, Nevada Utah Conference. Alice Garrett from Wisconsin Conference. David Graham, uh, Carolina Conference. Kathy Kistner, uh, Rock Mountain Conference. Gabriella Laub, Montana Conference, and Shelly Ringstaff from Michigan Conference. And we have this committee, uh, uh, some of them, they are new. Uh, probably Colette will be uh, answering for how long they can stay. I think it's better if you, if you do that. Uh, but anyway, this committee, some of them has experience already on the committee, uh, working with grants and some other, they are new. Um, um, because we want to give a chance for uh, other people to participate as well. And, and those people, they will be within um, every time, right? Uh, the, the grants, we really sp spend so much time going for every single uh, application. Uh, but uh, going over uh, your question again, I think you gave a, a good suggestion in regards going in person and probably the NAD team, they will be probably the one, the best ones to go. Uh, Derek as our director and also Colette, they are probably going to be in the field. Uh, and also we, we can use some of the committee members um, that uh, they can go there in their union and visit and give me a, a personal report. But I think due to, due to the COVID situation, uh, we have not been doing this personally. But any, anyhow, it's a good suggestion. It is, it is, and and it hasn't been done as much because of the, we are relying on the conference directors to have oversight, but if, if we are in an area and we have time, we do, but we have not done it in a systematic way as, as Pastor Biazzotto is saying, so and I think we are starting to draw on that a little bit more. It really is a uh, a body of some really unique growing ACS centers. So it's it's a good resource for us to be familiar with and see how it's going. The terms of service are three years at a time. And you will notice that those were some new names on there as opposed to the former committee, which was the, the original committee. And we didn't want to wipe it all clean and start with all people trying to learn fresh how to do this. So we were starting to cycle people in. And then after this, it'll be it'll be about a three year term. We just don't want the whole committee to change over all at once. Question, is it appointed or elected? Or uh, is the board the same as the grant committee, the seat committee? Or is it made up of board members? Uh, is the board different? No. No, the board, the ACS board is different from the seed grant committee. The seed grant committee is appointed looking at the different areas. And then the seed grant committee, they are simply reviewing those applications and saying if they recommend them to the board. So the board has the final say on whether they're approved or not, not the seed grant committee but we need somebody with a little closer touch to the ground to see what's happening, who understand ACS work a little bit closer to say, does this look viable? Is this what is, you know, we're making investments so that we have that overview. And there is a representative from most unions. Sometimes it just depends, but most unions have somebody in that territory. So if can there's we, something to work with. Can we get a list of the board members? The ACS, the NAD ACS board? Yes. Oh, I believe so. I believe so. We can, I, yeah. 
yeah, I know Winnell and Derek both have those. And I and I see hands that have been up. Um, Reb, and Rebby may have some questions too, if, how you want to handle that, Rebby. Uh, yes. Um, yeah, Kayla had a question in the chat box and I see her hand raised. Okay. Go ahead, Kayla. Was... Hi, Kayla from Hi. Washington State. Um, I just wanted to know what happens at that six month review if we don't see this increase after we've renovated or try to get more people to come to our facility. What happens if we're not seeing an increase? <laughs> we're coming after you. Um, <laughs> I don't know. You know, these, these are, we, we, we're, this is an evaluative process. It, it's, you, we are, we are investing, but we know that that there is risk in every endeavor and ministry is ministry. And sometimes it doesn't work like what we do. So we're helping you look through it as best we can. Um, and, and really, even if it didn't work out, like you said, in on the report form is lessons learned. And that that's an important part of the process. Ministry is a process and we understand that. So you're going to, just evaluate it honestly. This is a conversation and a partnership between you and the conference and us. So we just want to make sure that whatever is happening, we, we are all going to learn from it. So there's no strict, you have to reach this amount. Or if you don't get five more people, you owe us anything back. It's, okay. it's <laughs> not like that. It's not like that. All right. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Enoch? Yes. Are you there? Yeah, go, go ahead. Yes. Enoch Oduro with the Alberta Conference in Canada. When you talk about the eligibility, eligibility I didn't hear Canada mentioned. So is there a reason why Canada is not eligible? There is, and this is a historical answer that some of the funding, the offerings that come to fund this particular grant, Canada administrates differently. They do not pass those funds back onto the North American division. So they're held in Canada. And that was an agreement that was made between NAD, ACS, and Canada to, to administrate those funds separately in Canada. So I don't know exactly how they're using the funds, but that is why this, they're not included in this particular grant. There's other grants that they are, but the funds that, that are supplied for this grant in particular are from the offering and it's, it's a little different flow of money. So I am very sorry not to have you in there. Thank you. Yes, yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, Colette, there's a question in the chat box. Can more than one type of grant be applied to the same project? For example, both a seed and seed grant and a ACSDR. Oh. No, you have no? to choose which one will benefit your grant and, or your project and which one will fit you better. Uh, the funds are too closely aligned to do that with. <laughs> They are different different buckets, but they're they're in the big they're in the same pool. So you can't you, and and you can choose. Usually, there's one that's going to be of better value to you um, in what you're what you're seeking. And if and if anybody has anything to add to that, uh, Luis or no, I think it is. Uh, we, we cover pretty much everything, and we just want to say that. Um, uh, the committee is really, really to support the field. And I just want to express my gratitude for the um, NAD, ACS uh, team, uh, and the leadership of you, Colette, and Derek, uh, especially uh, both of you, and we know and read both of you guys, because uh, putting a budget aside to support the local field, it is really important. I think. Uh, um, and I just want to express that uh, representing the field, I just want to say to you that uh, the resources putting available will make a difference, not only now, but in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, next question. If our ministry is new, would we be qualified to apply for the grant? Do you want that one, Luis, or do you want me to take that? 
can you repeat again if the ministry is new would we be qualified to apply for the grant oh yes um we pretty much support the the ministry that is uh, uh improving uh, for example if you want to expand your ministry uh, but also, we uh, are willing to support the field in a way that uh, if you are starting a new project, a new program, and it qualifies, of course, right? Uh, uh, following the re requirements, uh, we are pretty much uh, open to support as well. Um, okay. Do you need a separate letter of recommendation from the president, executive secretary, and treasurer? or can two officers sign on one letter? We basically require uh, one of the administrators. It could be one the treasurer, the, the secretary, or the president. We're, we're not trying to put so many roadblocks that you have to get all three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be really hard. <laughs> okay, do we have any more questions? James. Yes, I see. Uh, Mr. Lee? Yes. Uh, if the administrator is also the ACS director, uh, would one letter be sufficient? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, would, I would prefer to, I think. Um, but part of this is, yeah, yeah, it's always nice when you're the same person. It makes you can delegate to yourself. Um, <laughs> uh, do you do you have a pre we have not heard that one before? And Luis, if you have a preference, I, I don't have a strong preference, but I kind of tend towards saying it's it's nice when two people are able to show knowledge of something and part of it is the the ability to show that the conference buy-in is there. So if it's um, if it's just one, you know, we want to know like the treasure that there is money and it's allocated and it's ready to go. So I think I think two would have a little more balance to to what's happening. Yeah. Okay. Right. I see we have a, we have two more questions that we have time for. I want to be respectful of everyone's time. I know we're a little over time. Uh, uh, Terry and then Charles. Those are the two hands I see up tangibly. Go ahead, Mr. Terry. Yeah, I'll be quick. Um, just real quick, I was wondering because uh, I was thinking uh, as we because uh, we're after uh, five or six months, we're supposed to be uh, turning in the reports. Um, so <laughs> the, the question was, um, uh, you know, are you going to have time to come over and look at it? Would it be helpful to say like in this somewhere that? Uh, um, yeah, I mean, maybe it already, you know, but basically sending in pictures of what's done afterwards, um, you know, that, that may be something that could be, you know, put in there as well, that that way, you know, whether you can come visit us or not, then you can see maybe before and after pictures that would, that would be helpful. Yeah, just, I was thinking that maybe help, be helpful, yeah. Yeah, and you know, I believe- whether you, whether you can make it come or whether you can make it all the way over here to see it or not, yeah. Yes, yes, and I'm excited about yours. Um, but they, that is part of the report form is we do request pictures because we can't get out to all of these. So it is it is good to see and it, it helps inspire us. It helps inspire others too when we have those photos to share. So yeah. And who was the, who was the Charles. last? Charles. Charles. Uh, my question is, uh, could we purchase a vehicle, uh, a pretty decent sized van for community service? Would, you know, would that qualify? It, I think, yeah. <laughs> I think it's <laughs> question. <laughs> this has been a matter of discussion. I, it is, you need to make sure that it qualifies under risk management. Yeah. Um, it, it needs to follow all of the guidelines. So we are careful in what we fund. So to make sure that there isn't a risk associated with it. And again, some of the other, the other um, aspects that have to do with whether 
it, does it need a CDL license to drive it? Some of the larger vehicles and there's additional costs. Those are those are pretty expensive to obtain. Those are like around five fifty five hundred dollars. So we we need there there's some more questions that come around that that you're going to want to explain. And there is a grant for disaster response mobile units. And if you look at that, that might give you some of the ideas of what those questions might be if you're requesting a vehicle. Right. This and, and that a, one. Oh, this sorry. was a vehicle that was previously used for community services. And, uh, you know, I don't know what the status is with it, but it was previously uh, utilized as community service uh, vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. Mo mobilization of our services is really a valuable trend to go out to people so yeah. we're seeing it in other areas so it, it is valuable but it is a depreciating uh, a quickly it can be a very quickly depreciating asset so we want to make sure that it's not going to become a, a, a burden to the ACS center as well that, that it's a high enough quality and in good running order that type of thing that you're going to want to know yeah thank you mm -hmm. All right. I think we are bringing this to a close and we just want to thank Colette Neuer. I mean, this was a very well done uh, uh, job that she put together here and we are ever so grateful for uh, the information. I think uh, if you would compare this process that we have here in Adventist Community Services to any of the other grants that are out there, I think you would admit that this is more straightforward and uh, uh, comprehensive in uh, uh, what is being re requested. It's very clear, I guess I should say, as far as what we're asking. Sometimes you look at these grant applications and you, you're, you're wondering, what exactly are they asking me? This is very clear. And uh, we are grateful to Colette and the team for uh, the work that they have done in making it uh, so, so very clear. And so we thank you all for staying with us. Uh, looks like we had at one point about 76, 77 people that uh, joined us this afternoon. I know a number of people had to leave uh, 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 because of the time, but we are thankful for uh, you all joining us this uh, afternoon. And don't forget the next date uh, that's coming up is March 7th uh, as far as the deadline for the seed grant. I know Colette mentioned that, we're just mentioning that again. And we also wanna mention for the another time, our uh, ACS convention, those that are planning on joining us there in Dallas, please get yourself signed up. We wanna make sure that we remind you that you do need to uh, sign up. I know uh, uh, the NAIL has sent out a number of notices about that and we'll be sending out more but uh, we did want to remind you that if you want to come in person, please get yourself registered. And if you're not comfortable coming in person, there is a virtual option as well. And so you need to sign up for that uh, as well for the ACS convention coming up April. April, uh, that's about two months from now. Uh, April 6th, it starts. Is that right, uh, Winnell? The 6th is the start date for the convention? It's actually the seventh, but the people seventh. come in on the sixth. There we go. There Thursday, we go. Friday, and Saturday. There we go. And so we're looking forward to uh, seeing many of you all again. I know it's been a while, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll be able to get a good number of you to join us there in Dallas, Texas. So thank you so much. We're going to go ahead and close things up. Uh, I think Rebby Isaac is going to uh, close us out this afternoon with Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for this time where we could get together and learn about um, ACS seed grants. Thank you, Lord, for this um, excellent and informative presentation by Colette. Um, we ask for your blessing on each individual present, present on this webinar, Lord. Um, and we ask for your blessing in our individual roles and uh, ministries, Lord, as we uh, continue to serve you and serve your people. Thank you for um, using us as the hands and feet of Jesus. And be with us as we gather this information and 
utilize it in our ministry. For I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen.